I just want to start from the outset to say that any decision we make today may change tomorrow. In order to have the best expert advice, we have commissioned... Supercoach 360. <laughs> if the time's going up, it's recording. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time for the show. Mate, 100%. We need to find out why they think it's okay to say anything. It's certainly one of the greatest challenges in the history of the game. That's what they want to try and do. Mega star to mega star. In this regard, we're leaving every option on the table. Excellent. Oh, what was that, buddy? Something special. You know what? Uh, that's not talent. Oh. Uh-huh. Super Coach 360. The way to handle these things is to stay measured, stay calm, you know, live your life as normal. Unless we start finding it off the people who are actually just do it. It makes their little ordinary life feel a little bit better for that moment. Super Coach 360 podcast. G'day, welcome to Supercoach 360. How you doing? It is your boy, Jazzy J. Uh, thank you for joining us in the Coach's Box again this week to talk all things NRL Supercoach. Uh, we have got a massive show coming up as usual. I've noticed I use the word massive a lot in all of our descriptions lately. So we're going to try and curb that. But anyway, it's going to be a huge night. Um we, it, it really is, though. We do have uh, a bit to talk about. It's that time in the preseason. We've got a little bit of footy. We've got, uh, you know, like we, we saw Reggie's and trials on the weekend. We've got a couple of games coming up this weekend, more trials. But we're going to hopefully start seeing closer and closer to first grade sides. Um, so... How good is it? So good. Oh, it, footy back. It, oh, it's great. It is. It's great to have footy back. I mean, mind you, not without its... Uh, Mate, what is the word here? Spit it out, Junior. But, yeah, I know, right? I, I, but not without its incidents. Uh, massive weekend. I mean, hey, Dunster, cheapy that everyone was looking at. Gaunt, shot knee, 12 months, 14 months. Yeah. That's it. Like, that's huge, man. Toro Fumayano, who, yeah, pretty juicy, cheapy, really, still this year, especially if he could lock down a starting spot, but, you know, f- possibly facing a five to seven week suspension. He's accepted five, I think. I think he was very harsh done by. I would have thought that. I don't think he deliberately did that, in my opinion. Yeah, well, that's it. Look, I'm not sure. But, I mean, that was the one thing that we could probably glean uh, out of the trials this weekend. If nothing else, um, how the game is possibly going to be adjudicated this year. How uh, the game is going to be, you know, how the umpires are going to call it. We saw uh, they're not taking anything in terms of head high. Now, I said we'll put this to you before the show. And what did you say? Uh, I think it'll cease. It'll ease up. Yeah? What, you uh, think they just make an example think, during yeah. the trials? They're trying to scare him through the trials with the safety net of if you send a player off, they can be replaced anyway in the trial, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but learn, learn your lessons but, yeah. now as a team. Hopefully. All right. Don't want to say magic around round one. No, well, definitely not. Yeah, yeah. Just, it, just mass suspensions. I mean, they're going to give him a few weeks to get used to it for sure. Uh that, the other voice you were hearing tonight, of course, my faithful co-host, Con. How you doing, brother? Good, good. So? Bergsy, you're in here as well. What's going on? Not much, buddy. Chilling. You're doing the... Uh, what are you doing there? You're putting together your draft side, are you? Oh, I've done I've done some shares, but yeah, I have gone to my draft side, my latest draft side. Oh, we've got a few. You're starting to, you're starting <clears throat> to make them? Yeah, I'm in um, four now, so oh, I think I'll... I've only got one left. I so. was talking draft classic side, but you're talking draft draft. But that's all right, because we're... I've, it's got, a dra- I've got both easy accessible. I was about to say, it's a drafty night, and we are talking both of those things. In fact, we're going to talk... Um, what to do with the draft element of NRL Supercoach. And we're also going to take a look at our first drafts of our teams and just sort of start to play around with well, what ideas each of us are working with in terms of how we're going to build our team, obviously pending TLT. Um, so in terms of draft, boys, have you guys well seasoned in draft? No, I'm pretty terrible at draft, to be honest. Um, and I don't know if I've learnt much either over the last year of drafting, but we'll have a go. I don't mind having a go at it. It's a, it's a very different different way of super coaching. You've got to look at so much so much more, if you know what I mean. It's everyone's on everyone. You you can find out a thousand things on three blokes in classic, whereas in draft you've really got to look thin 
down a bit further where you are going to end up picking and choosing from blokes that you would much rather be getting 30s and 40s rather than 10s and 15s, you know what I mean? So dra- draft is a different beast, and it's it's one that I, I think people, with, especially if you're a serious super coach, I think if you want to have some fun with your friends and not everyone can have turbo and not everyone can have knife, um, it's just a way to sort of break down your sort of skills on footy and what you sort of know about super coach you know shows you where you're at i came dead last in most of my drafts last year so shows you where i'm at and that's why i've got a list <laughs> <laughs> over here for you at home and what about you con you done draft before yeah i've done it a bit success here and there um yeah it just depends really on where you fall in that order originally as to how it's going to dictate your season. All right. Well, look, look, let's let's look at that then. Because if, that, if that's the first element you get for your draft, if that's one of the things that can factor into your season, what do you mean by that? Do you really need... Because there's the two types of draft, yeah? There's linear draft and snake draft, but most people are doing the snake draft, yeah? Yeah. So the snake draft is where you... So if you get pick one, you get then what? In a 12-man draft, you then get pick 24. 25, yeah. 25. All right. It's got to go all the but way then up you get, and all But the then way you get back. 25, 26. Oh, no, yeah, 24, 25, sorry. There you go, maths, boys. All right, cool. Um, So, yeah, and then obviously on the next one, you'd then be looking at, oh, here we go, being a smart ass. Now, can you lay it down again? Um, Pick 48 and 49, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Which, if you really do the math on that, it's getting thin. But uh, well, yeah, well, that, that's it. And that, that's the first thing I noticed. I mean, I've done a couple of them in the last couple of years, and... The joys are, but you get turbo or cleary. Most of the time, people take cleary. But then, who do you get as your second pick or your second third? Like, who are you realistically well, looking at once you've gotten through that top twenty-five? You're looking at the last top-tier player, anyone maybe who's been missed. Well, you're right. well the thing is with draft, especially if you're going to go into keeper leagues and dynasty leagues, like I've joined a couple of dynasty leagues. Um, you don't just have to look for this year. So you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want a thirty year old halfback as your first pick if he's only going to play two or three more seasons when you you've hypothetically all signed right, on right. for the hold long haul. Hold on, hold on, you know come on. I mean? We're trying to cover draft basics, and the first time we throw to you and you just go dynasty draft, which is just a whole new complex world. Okay, we'll just stick with the other. Let, let's just stick with classic draft for a sec, buddy, before we go explaining the concept okay. of picking it years in advance. Okay. But God. if that's your thing. If you do like your dynasty draft, then make sure you check out our boy Ricky Rowdy Harrington over at Fig Jam Dynasty Draft. Go, go, keep going, talking. Yeah, uh, make sure you check out our boy Ricky over at Fig Jam Dynasty Draft. He does run dynasty draft leagues, which will, you know, get you going through the... All right. We throwed him. What? What? Okay, so drafting, yeah, like ideally you don't want to be picked 12. Like I was just picked 12 um, in a draft and by the time it got to me, I had to start thinking where is it going to get thin first quickest, which was going to be hooker, not many. Not many hookers, you know what I mean? To ideally pump out big points. Not many halves. There's probably really only three halves that you'll hang your hat on and say, right, well, they're, they're the three best halfbacks. The rest of them are a tear down. No, you, know? you got one, and then you got Daly and Hughes, probably. So, and then you got the rest. In, in, in a perfect world of draft, you'll lose. In, in my head, you'll probably lose a Turbo, a Nathan Cleary, then a Teddy, then probably a Pappenhausen, a Latrell, probably a David Fafita and a Munster. Um, then you're looking at some Angus Crichton. Or Harry Grant, Brandon Smith. Harry Grant, Brandon Smith. Now, there goes your top 12 dudes straight away. So that it's not even on its way back to you yet. You know what I mean? All right, hold on. Uh, it's, it's just one of the things you've got to look deep into. Like, um, <clears throat> by the time it gets down to you again, yeah, you get your two picks, but where do you go with it? Do you then want to get stuck with the, the worst halfback in the comp or the worst hooker in the comp? These are things you got to like. You can make it up in the second row. Like, granted, you're not going to get a David Fafita effort out of a um, 
a Lukey or a, or a Mitch Barnett or someone like that, but they're going to do a decent job if they get minutes and stuff like that. Like doing a draft this early is probably no good if you're doing it for cash because you don't really know team yeah. lists and stuff. But if you're just doing it for fun with the boys and you just want to kill some time, it's good fun. Um, get on a Zoom chat and do a draft. You know, we did it. That's my favourite part of it, just actually drafting a team. But yeah, like, what do you do? What what's what's your strategy in in what? Where are you going with your picks? Like, you hypothetically well, get first. I, I had first pick in a couple. I went Nathan. Yep. Oh, why? Why would because you go Nathan? He's so far ahead of the next best, so I can't see that gap closing. But I can see the other fullbacks closing on Turbo. Yeah, yeah. So where did you end up getting? Where'd you go? Like, you went fullback next, obviously. When it came around, did you snag a KP or someone like that, or? Um. I think I've got a Brandon Smith, maybe. Yeah. And then you and get then another KP. Pick. And then a KP, yeah. I think that's how one of them planned out. Can't remember now. Yeah, but but that's where you went. You you started filling up key positions. Yeah, I always go. I always go for the spine first. Your forwards and, and then. You s- well, your backs you can interchange on matchups. Some of them, like yeah. some of them, by the end you're littered with a bit of rubbish. Like if I was falling as about seven or eight, or somewhere around that mid range bit. And Dave Fafita was still there. I'd probably snap him up first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just because yeah. how explosive he is. But yeah. Yeah, apart from that, I'm going for the spine first. Yeah. And you see, that's the same as me. I, I fill them roles as well. Like, you've got to fill up your spine roles with at least people who can chug along with them, you know, with the key guys. Because um, you can sort of make it up elsewhere with... With stuff, and if you're quick on the waivers, and and if you're good with the free agencies and stuff like yeah, picking definitely. matchups, like that's another key thing to draft, and like you've really got to be on top of free agents, and you've really got to be on top of waivers, because I think some some drafts, if you're coming last, you get first pick no matter what, so you get the first cherry yeah. off the cake every week, which was me last week, last year, and a couple of boys were like, what the fuck, he gets it every week, it's because he's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> but he deserves it um, But yeah That's just my take Some people are different Everyone's got a different Draft strategy Well that's yeah that's it You can just pick Say your best Say you run out of Positions Somewhere Like in a key position Like the hookers Or whatever And you don't get a gun Well ma- mainly centre wing You can run without one And just use the auto emergency On the bench And just get Just have a star there Yeah 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 Do you get that? Yeah Right, should, I, should we, um, what are we doing now? Partner, well, uh, I actually want to talk about uh, Rick's top 25. So the fact that you went KP in round three, Con, um, raises a good point because Rick still was saying that... Now his dynasty draft, this is different again. Partner, no, 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 that was just, just a standard draft, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, you were saying that you got you ended up picking up KP in round three, Brandon Smith round two, and then you got Cleary in round one with your first choice pick. So I think no matter what pick you get, uh, it's really important to just have a plan on when you are going to get crucial players or f- fill crucial positions and then having a list of sort of possibilities that you're actually happy to fill that with and then when you might be able to get them. That's the biggest thing which I've taken away from um, the way Rickster's been writing about some of these guys, but he's actually got a top 25. So you guys made it to 12, yeah? So you obviously did Nathan, Tommy, uh, the most, pa- Pappy, Harry, sorry, Teddy. Yeah. The most frustrating thing about that, having the list ready to go and everything, is you get someone pre-booked there and you wait like eight, nine picks or something and nobody grabs him and then the bloke before he just takes that pick right out from underneath your days like... I'm normally that it guy. It can make you really cranky sometimes. So is, <clears throat> do you have to sometimes move that forward if that happens? Like, w- what do you do in that situation? Panic. Yeah? Yeah, we, some, sometimes you've know, you got 60 seconds or whatever, and it's like, oh, shit. See, this is where they Which say, have, do I need to go? Have, have a plan, have a backup plan. Yeah. Well, what, are you, what are you actually trying to fill? You're not trying to fill as many as a classic team, well, are you? You can have 12... Player yeah. drafts or 17 players, like normal team, you can have 13 yeah. on field, 7 reserves. I see a lot of 12-12s going around. Or 12, 12 and 14 man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, comps, you mean? Yeah, 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 in terms of comps, but yeah. Well, that's like, one where we, I think you only got two centres and two back rowers. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so we got to Payne Haas, Tao, uh, TPJ. Do you have him on there? See, I wouldn't have Payne Haas that high, personally. No? 
You don't think he's just one of those picks that's going to get grabbed in one of those rounds? So if you want him he normally does. to fill that position. He normally does. But last year, like, he, he did regress a couple of points. I'm not saying he will this year, but I don't think he's high, as high out of the food chain as he was last year. He's still, he's still easy, uh, uh, if not a first, a second round pick to some people. Still averaged yeah. 68 last year. Um, and look, slightly better squad there. Hopefully a bit more confidence. Um, he, he's a big boy and he's still only just sort of coming of age. So we still don't know what to expect out of him. I don't think. I think he's still definitely got more in the tank. So I think there's still potential there. And 68 a week, guaranteed. Is it worth yeah, it? Yeah, but then you got other front rowers that are 65 and that they're going to fall in the third, fourth round. Yeah. So the waste to pick on paying Huss that early, I think. What about TPJ? Would you go to that early on TPJ? Dave Fafita would be the only forward I'd be jumping up in yeah. probably in the top 10 for. Yeah, so he's number six on the list. He's got TPJ at number 11. What about Reed Marnie? Where does he sit? I mean, is he <clears throat> your number two hooker for the season? Uh, no, I've got Brennan Smith, Harry Grant as the two top ones. Yeah. And then probably Reed, Cook, McInnes on the next level blow. There you go. But so all of those are going to get picked up in what the first two or three rounds. Yeah, definitely. Think so, yeah. yeah. So that's it. As everyone starts trying to fill their spine. Well, that's so, it. That can, that can also be dictated to you by what other people are doing. If you see three hookers going a row, you're get getting on in on a hooker on your next pick for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's it. They're, they're going hot this yeah. round. Which then adjust, has to readjust your list. You go down one. You well, know what I mean? Are you better off planning your list around? You, you, you list, positions? You list. Yeah, I think you definitely go positions. You have your top five or whatever, top ten, fifteen even, you probably need. There's also and you just some, cross them off as they go and you just get that next one. Once it, you're down to sixth or seventh on your list, you start loading that position, see, I think. On, see, that's on your list, you have to have a guy that you, you'll draw the fucking line at too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you don't want to roll in there with a, um, who's the worst half, half back in the comp? Dearden, you don't want to roll in with a Dearden thinking, yeah, I'm sweet, you know, I've, you've fucked yourself, <laughs> Let, waiting for a Tommy Dearden, you know, uh, sorry, but probably poor yeah, choice. Or, like, or a Wade Egan or something There's somewhere like you've got to draw a line and say, well, I can't go under that player, so I need to snap him up then and there, or I'm in a bit of horrors. Like, I think really for the first four rounds of draft picks... You really need to focus on filling, like you said, those spine positions as quickly as possible. You've just got to aim that I've got to get one of these guys per round. So do you stick? I mean, you can then prioritise perhaps by what guns are available, but being able to still be able to fill those positions. So you've got to pull 30 to choose from, you know, which dwindles down to whatever it's going to be, the final position on round four. But for me, that seems like the most logical strategy to try and get in with. But <clears throat> I didn't realise you had to have such a comprehensive list. Like, you're right, you're talking, you know, 12 positions on the field, 5, 10 options for each of them, and then... At least 5, 10 options, because you've already got 9 other drafts. people or yeah. 11 other people in the draft, plus you've got to pick multiple of those positions. So your it's list a, needs to be pretty extensive. It's a big game to get your head around. But it is fun when you get there. Like, it is fun. All right, did I interrupt you doing a shout-out earlier because I'd zoned out and clicked back in the conversation? Probably you. Yeah. No, I don't think so. When you're talking about so. dynasty, no, you just started talking about dynasty on a tangent. No, I just like said like if you do, uh, sometimes if you're doing them drafts, because some of them are keeper leagues as well. Sometimes you you have to plan in for the future. Like um, you don't want a bloke who's retiring next year in in a team that you you need next year. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that, that's like, a, that's an even more advo- advanced form of draft again. Yeah. So, but there well, are just, just on that, if you don't have Nate Hughes or Chez. Those top echelon ones. I'm banking on a 30-year-old Adam Reynolds or something before I'm going looking at the future with a CHT or Tom Dearden or something like that. I mean, And I'm banking on those two or three years and then someone else to come through and develop and I'll snatch them up throughout that time. If someone else is there. Yeah. That's the other thing. You've got to get on them before the other, t- however many guys in the draft. Yeah, well, I see you'd want to be on, up to date with your reserve grade, yeah. see who's coming through. Yeah, and that's where some of the blokes just leave you behind because they know so much more than you. That oh, so some people are just on another level, aren't they? Speaking yeah. of being on another level, uh, check oh, out. Should I give some shout outs? Because I have, I have a list of podcasts and places to go for people who are keen for draft. Because I don't know, we don't know enough about draft to say, hey guys, we'll tell you how to do draft. But this, this list of people that I have could probably help you out. 
if you know what I mean. Um, now, obviously, the Fig Jammers, um, Rickster and the boys, they break down Dynasty Draft, so Keeper Leagues and stuff like that, looking for the future. Then there's the Weekly Rubdown. Weekly Rubdown. Uh, then Three Wise Draftsmen, the Headbin. Uh, best Draft something. Oh, I've fully forgot that one. Oh, BDE, it's called BDE. Check that out. It's abbreviated B.E. B.D.E. Big Draft Energy? Maybe. I don't know. We'll all just go with it. Um, and then... The weekly rub down boys with Jar uh, Watto. Watto, you all see him commenting every week. He's one of the boys that puts in the questions. He's he's a wicked dude. Uh, Watto and the boys have got a weekly rub down rub lab on the Discord. So most years are in the Discord through the Supercoach Hub. So I suggest if you can do that, uh, contact Watto. He'll give you a link, um, and it was called the weekly rub down rub lab on the Discord. It's for drafters pretty much only. I don't know if they do classic, but drafters get there if you really want to look into your draft. And also to help you with your draft and just Supercoach in general, I've got nrlsupercoachstats.com because you can, if you really want to look into some of these players that are a bit further down the list and, and there's not much on them, there's a good chance he's got something on them over there. And on the supercoach360.com, www. Supercoach360.com See you at the end of time Forever <laughs> Ferguson Cohen Supercoach Forever A thousand times Forever www.supercoach360.com Forever Two Wow Worst plug ever What happened? The professionalism I don't know man Ask yourself I think it's done alright <clears throat> I think you had a stroke I think the people around you Have been asking for a while buddy They're you just keep putting me Looking on. Looking for answers too. You just keep putting me on. We do, we do. So we only got halfway through Rowdy's top 25. I want to know where you guys think these guys should be sitting. So Payne Haas, you didn't think. TPJ, you obviously wouldn't be putting in that realm either. Reed Marnie, Cody Walker, yeah? Yeah. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Angus Crichton, second row. Did he go him in the first two rounds? It, oh, yeah. Start I, second I can, row. I can see logic yeah. to it. I can see logic to it. But J Jack me, me personally, not. No. Nah. Dally? Yeah. Yeah, Brandon Smith. Yeah, Jerome Hughes. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Madison. Not Maddo. Okay, no. I I path and stuff like that. That's where I'd probably start thinking about taking the pain Hustlers and TPJs, depending on what I've already got in my bank. Yeah. Okie dokie. Um, Damien Cook. Yeah. Oh. If where I was, you, if the hookers were going hot, where do you guys rate Damien in terms of hookers this year? Fifthish. Fifth, sixth. I, I see. I see him going up a notch this year, personally. Yeah. I, I hope he finds a bit better form. Look into your crystal balls. Where do you uh, see him finishing the year? Oh, got, wait, I'll wait Harry. I got Harry Smith, Marnie McInnes. Fuck. You hate Damien Cook. I don't hate Damien Cook. You hate you Damien Cook. Cook, you finished third or fourth know. for me. No, I got him fifth or sixth. Wow. Third or fourth for me. Cam Murray. Is he on Gus level? Mm, if he starts playing 80. So if you were picking your team tomorrow, no. Nah. All right. Reese Walsh. You might have even had average Gus last well, year. Reese Walsh. See, fullbacks, fullbacks are a bit thin by now. So then by the time you've termed, by, a little bit, by the time you've tiered out all your fullbacks, where's Reese Walsh sitting for you? He'd have to be fifth or sixth, wouldn't he? So fullbacks start going hot. Yeah. Turbo Teddy, Paps, Trill. I got KP out there, but then, then Reese Walsh becomes a consideration, yeah, right? Then Walsh, yeah, and then you're looking at a Walsh, Walsh. Gutho. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd probably put him um, around the same point as Gutho. You never know. They could eat. The, both of them could go yeah, either way. And then, you know who I'm who I like is a bit of a smoky this year, especially if Jackson Hastings didn't that go good? Fucking Dane, Dane Laurie. Laurie. Oh, I saw a picture of him earlier. I looked up at a picture of the Tigers, and I was just like. Oh, I've forgotten about Dane Laurie. Like I, was, I, I wanted to draft him the other week, so I'm poaching him from underneath me. I don't know who it was, but I just want him for reserve on the bench anyway. But yeah, so the rest of the team wasn't so bad. He's a good with footballer. we no Dewey in the team for the first half of the season either. He's going to be the pivotal point. In but if you've got the potential for somebody else to come back and push Hastings out or become a decent hooker for them, either of uh, uh, not push Hastings out, push Brooks out. 
<sighs> or become a decent hooker for them. They just don't, they just don't have the forward pack to lay the platform for their players, other players to achieve their goals. They just I don't think, think they're got really the weak in the middle. Yeah, see, I don't think they've got the backpack, even if they did, unfortunately. But Uto is all they got. Yeah. A lot's going to be riding He's on He's only a 20-year-old kid. You know, it's it's the same thing. They get a couple of, like, disheartening moments, and it's hard for him to get back, you know, and especially if it's on him to do it, you know. He's just a kid. A little Western Sydney pain, huh, eh? Uh, all right, Cam McInnes in that list as well. Oh, well, yeah, K- KP, Reese Walsh. Cam McInnes. Yeah, I like Cam McInnes because he's dual position. And then he had Josh, well, Car- Josh Curran in there. But I think he's gone cold on Josh Curran. Perso, Perso the other day commented on your thing. and um, He seems to think trap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like can can you can you set him a, just a reason why he's not a trap? No, I just think well, you see, you've seen his work ethic in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's breakout season, and I think playing lock, running the ball as well a lot more, maybe even picking up some attacking stats with the ball playing through the middle. He'll still, if he gets a sixty five. To 80 minutes, he'll make his 50 odd tackles. So you're already starting at a pretty good point, better yeah. than most hookers. I so. think I think Perso's uh, concern might have been the fact that he was coming back from the knee injury. Oh, yeah. you're definitely waiting and letting his price bottom out. So you're not starting. No, with your no, I won't in the draft scenario. In the drafts, yeah, but not in, in the draft scenario. Classic, yeah. not in classic. No, see, I think he was talking more in classic, but he was saying the same thing. Watch and act. So yeah, that's right. it. Hopefully, he gets eased back, drops to around the 400 odd k mark, and you snap him up. Happy All days. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be a great option a hooker. Well, that's it. I'm thinking about using him as a stepping stone. Especially to if you haven't gone a gun hooker to start with and you banked on someone to hopefully have a breakout year, like I'm thinking about doing, um, Still. you could just swap them straight out pretty much. Just have that breakout year. We've been waiting, eh? People are waiting. I'm waiting for Jeremy Marshall King. I'm hoping he can be my breakout star. <laughs> Where are we at, Tuzzy? I don't know. Uh, Rick's got a few value picks in terms of draft for us just before we move on from draft. So, uh, Tino, where do you put Big Tino in terms of your round selection? I've got him six-ish, depending on how I've gone earlier, because his dual position is pretty highly valuable in draft. Yeah. Being able to rotate those players between positions when you've got bugger all to pick from it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fifth round, sixth round. I can see him going. Yeah, that's it. Rick's has got him fifth, six, or uh, yeah, fifth, fifth, fifth to six. Um, uh, Zach Lomax, where where would you put him? So if you could jag him, yeah, you can get him if, late. Yeah, if you jag him eight or nine or something, you'd be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I reckon. If someone's got a hard on for him, but he could go early. Shit. Yeah. Well, if you're in there, the same supporter. What's yeah. the earliest you'd go on him? Me personally, uh, like, no. Nah, imagine, imagine you're, a, imagine you're a 10? Dragons fan. Yeah, again, if I, if I was, you gotta play with your head, not your heart. Yeah, but you know what? I'm, but yeah. some people, people like just Dra- want draft. Yeah, absolutely. One players, you know, like, and he's a goal kicker. I, I could say, I could see him going as early as six. Ooh, all right. Not for my team, but I could see him <laughs> going as early as six. You know. All right, fair enough. I think uh, Rich has got him. Uh, round six, round six, seven. Speaking of Fig Jam, I'm on there Thursday night, so check their podcast out Friday. I'm going there, and hopefully Mitch has signed his contract as well. Going to meet Snoop together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marty to power. Whoa, yeah. way down, ten, eleven. Nah. Yeah, it's it. I'm into power. I haven't heard him heard mentioned much in classic circles this year. He's just a chug along. There's a there's a there's a there's a um, dozen of them, man. Yeah, well, that's you a bit. They're yeah. gonna get fifty fifty five and do their job, and they're they're just dudes you can pick up late as. And then that's what's it. he? They're a dime a dozen. What's he? Thirteen points behind Payne Huss. All right, Satili so Tupanua. Ah, uh, not a jewel, is he? Not. Um, again, I see him going late as well. Yeah, seven or eight. eight. It's second row. You generally got a couple of options there to fill, don't you? There's heaps of them, yeah. But they go quick. What are you trying to fill your bench with? Jewels. Jewels utilities. Uh, Jewels halves. Halves go quick. If you can snap up a semi-decent half, someone's going to need to trade you um, something. 
Yeah, fair you know, enough. and that's another that's another ploy. If you can, if you can snap up someone who's very tradable, you you might be able to, to muscle your way in on someone just a bit better. Well, that's yeah, that's something you could do if you get like one of the early, the back to back picks. If your tenth pick, you double up on the two best absolute weapons there, and then use them as trade Bar- bargaining. Yeah. yeah, bargaining power later, later on. on. All right, a couple more on this list. Uh, Dylan Edwards. Nice. Nah, Where's you reckon your Down fullbacks? Eighth order for me. Tenth. Yeah, he's fucking yeah. If he can get involved in those backline sweeps, he becomes a lot more attractive. But at the moment, he just returns kickoffs. Big Uto. Yeah, I've got him right up there in my front row. When you pick him up, I've eight. got him top five front rowers. I pick him up seven or eight. I Seven think be, just because if you can get in that way, I think you're doing really well. Yeah, I, I still think you will. Not a lot of people uh, from the internet saying, not that all that many people sold on him. See, I'd, I'd take him five or six, as long as I had me spine done in those first four rounds. Now, speaking of that, so when what round do you start picking up the cheapy versions for the spine? If you are taking the risks there, like your Chris Randalls or you know your Jeremy Marshall King or something like that. Um. Well, again, you'll probably be able to pick them up late, depending on yeah. who's looking at them. You know, if if you could be the only person looking at, like, That's no it. one's looking at Jerry Marshall King Bar about six fucking people, mate. Yeah. You know, and it's I got like, about around fourteen or fifteen. I think it, of it's it's one of them Just things. Like, like, if you're if you've got a sneaking suspicion, that like, old mate could have that same sneaking suspicion and go off his gut and think, oh, Con Con might think that. Bang! I'm snapping him early, and then you're there. Fuck. Fuck, I had plans and that throws your order out of whack again, like but it's one of them things if you're the only one looking then you can snap up quite a couple of people if you're the only one looking at them late. Like it's it's one of those things. Well you see even after the draft's done, you go back and have a look at the list and you're like, Oh, I missed him, oh missed him. There's well I think still there that you can pick up. I think maybe that's not the factor. I think it's just because you had to get these other positions filled, so it's just he didn't matter at the time. Like when you go back, you think, well, I've picked someone's shit up earlier for no reason. There's obviously a panic one or something like that. Why isn't it loading? Why isn't it loading? Well, yeah, that happened to Jay. Like Jay from the War Room. Um, he was in our, he was in our draft. Remember, it auto picked him. Yeah, he had him on good auto picks, buddy. Jag monster, he got heaps good ones. When I get auto pick, I get fucking duds. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, moving on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you want to do some shout outs? Just do some shout outs for all the draft stuff. I just did them. Shout out I? everyone's Discord. Okay, do it again. Shout out the podcasts. Uh, Fig Jam. I'll be there Thursday. So the podcast probably up Friday. Does Rick's to go live? Uh, I'm not sure if he is this week. He might be with some of the drafts. I'm okay, sure. then we got the weekly rub down. What I also has. The Discord, so weekly rub down lab, check that out on the Discord. Three Wise Draftsmen, the Headbin Podcast, and the BDE. I didn't go up and check that out, sorry. <laughs> you know how I get. Um, but yeah, and then if you're really struggling when you get to these some of these lower players before you do a draft, or you might be on a draft where you get a couple of hours between picks and everyone's on the ball, you can go and have a look on supercoachstats.com. And um, have a look at their priors, and and if th- they might jag a start, and just try to do some math. Well, that that can help you big time, because say you got, you, you can see a couple of potential centre wings coming through to start the year. Yeah. You can load up the rest of your team, hoping, like Suwali or something, he's not going to go to a really late in the draft, so yeah, you yeah. can load up other positions before you worry about sneaking him in a bit later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. You got to, you do have to load up on some positions and and, and cut your losses elsewhere. Yeah, you know? but that's up to your game plan and your strategy. Every one of them's different. Um, that's why I've given you that list because let's be honest, the more opinions, the better for your your draft and strategies. Like if you hear so many different ones, um, Juzzy. Levi Crookshack wants to know how the draft positions are. Uh... Selected. So is it just random? Uh, it comes down to the... Yeah, it's, what, the starting order and stuff? Yeah, 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 yeah the, random. the pick order is just well, random. Well, not necessarily. It comes down to the administrator, doesn't it? No, I don't think so. I think it's just random. Uh, 
All right, cool. Um, look, I'm just saying g'day to all the boys. There's a bunch of people out there. Luke Smith, Brad Smith. Um, Stop the dress. Mark Hindle's in there. Valsey. Henry Bryn. Georgie's in there. Scott Smith. I already said Scott Smith. No, no, it's another Smith. Yeah, it is. That's three. Bang. Lance George is in there as well. G'day to all the Smiths. Just call ourselves the Smiths. Jared Watto's in there as well. Uh, Glenn Fisher. Brod Thompson. He said uh, he's drafted with you guys and you definitely need some practice. I mean, we're not doubting that. Ross Mann's in there. G'day, buddy. How you doing? Let's go. Uh, all righty. So remember a couple of weeks ago, boys, we talked uh, poison mids. Yeah. Yeah. So this week, I want to put to you a few of the good mids that I've hit up the Brains Trust in, behind supercoach360.com, and I was like, hey, hit us up with some good mids. And this was the who they gave me. Who'd they give you, man? First one off the rank, uh, Isaac Targo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah? If, if he gets center spot, yeah. Under 300k. Let's see, it looks like he's going to get a starting center spot. He's looking pretty deadly. Okay, let's throw the world on a flip side, but what if he gets benched second row? Would you still get him at under 300? Probably not. No? Okay. If I was desperate enough, yes. Yeah, okay. So you're only picking up the Panthers' 80 minute centre spot, which is oh, and, and, and that's only because of his price too. Yeah, if it was 400k. I wouldn't bother, but yeah, his price and what I have to do elsewhere in my team, I need it. All right. So I've heard uh, the early mail coming out of Parramatta. Uh, Sean Russell looks like he's going to pick up the uh, spot left vacant by the Hayes Dunster in- injury in the trial. Um, haven't heard much about him to be honest. Um, if we remember, Fergo didn't really score much out there either. Um, so it's one; of, it's a gamble. It is a gamble. Now you got a bloke that hasn't. Let's be honest. I mean, Fergo got oh. lots of attempts to score out there. Whoever gets the left spot, because Sibo's out for I think half the season. So yeah. whoever scores that side, if they're that within, right. within range, yeah, that'll be good to look at. I think. All right. Uh, Bo Firma. Yeah, like, like him, him if he gets a starting spot and plays at least 65, 70 minutes. So we start in the back row? Yeah. yeah. Yep. For Proctor. All right. You and Aiken. I know you boys have been bigging up you and Aiken. I'm, co- I'm getting colder on him. Why? Don't know. Oh, Don't know. Right. Just because you know what? Everyone's on him, you know? And it's one of them things sometimes fucking everyone's on him. We could go well of last year. Could go both ways, you know? But. I don't know. If, if if he's all I got, I'll put him there. But yeah. I'm really hoping I can get better. I like him. I put, where are you going to put him? Isn't he, Jewel? Yeah, he'd be I'm in my centres. I think play. he averaged 60 in base and power last year. And nearly a lot higher than that with his tries. Yeah, that's he it. scored a few. I'll, I'll give you a sneaky spoiler. He did make it into my draft team, but in the centres, yeah. Yeah, I like him. Uh, Katoni Stacks. Yeah, I like him too. I like Katoni. Yeah. Think he's going to be a beneficiary. I don't know. Of Ray? Definitely. Uh, Any word on the Haas partner at Broncos? I heard Billy Walters might have it sewn up. Don't know. I why. heard Ezra Mam. Yeah, young kid coming through. Yeah, Bro, he's in front. No, nah, I heard Billy Walters in front today. I read somewhere today Billy Walters in front, but that was from Daddy's coach, I guess. Yeah, uh, but yeah, supposedly Ezra Mam's the future. So. I'm, I'm up, fingers crossed for Ezra. All right. Uh, Xavier Coates, you're all still hot on yeah, Xavier. I like him. Yeah. He's in the right team. Yeah, definitely. Chris Randall, well, I think everyone's yep. starting with him at this point. Uh, Jackson Hastings. Yeah, I've like got him too. I like him. Yeah. Especially what I do, he's out for what, 10 rounds, is he? Or nine rounds? Yeah. Where you got him? Reserve half, or reserve 5 8? 5 8 for me. Just straight 5 8. I think I just updated him to straight five eight two yesterday. Really? Taking a chance on the Tigers attack. All right, you boys do you. He's three fifty K man. But yeah, I know. So but, and, and it got me Nath too, so what I lose out there, I'm hoping I'll make okay. up with Nath. Yeah, well see that that's it. I had to drop Nath. I had to drop Nath to Jerome Hughes. Anyway, we'll get to our draft teams in a bit. Uh Tao Tao on Mono. Not sold. Not yeah, so if he plays six for the Dragons, yes, I know he's cheap and stuff, but I know you can't see him producing great scores in that team. It was the ten words you said before. If he plays six for the Dragons, 
It was about six words. Seven. Dragons are shit. <laughs> Counting Sorry. on his finger, still got one wrong. Dragons are shit. Sorry, Dragon supporters, but... Suwali? Yeah, I like Suwali if he gets a wing spot. All right, Helium, Helium Luki. Maybe center spot on, on Suwali. Yeah, yeah, I like Luki. If Luki starts, absolutely. Yeah, so what, what's the criteria for him? Left side. Starting left side, front row. No, he getting the edge? he'll be second row. No, he's, what's his, do you have his price there? 350 uh, something. I got him in my side. He's 350. So seven. even if he can push out 60 minutes on the edge at 350. He's 351, 500. He'll be pretty happy with that. Yeah. If he can go at a point in a minute. Uh, Matt Lodge, you feeling him? I, I don't mind Lodge. Yeah? I think there's a few. Is maybe. there a bit of a log jam for forwards at the Warriors? Or is this always the case? And I'm just like, w- what happens? Do they just inevitably get suspended? Mainly back rows, I think they're stacked in. So Lodge is going to play front row. AFB is going to play front yeah. row. Who else they got? You got Bunty Afawa. Yeah. Ben Murdoch Masilla. Jazz. Jazz plays in the middle. Bailey Siren and Clay in the middle. Tohu's out for half a year, so there's some minutes available. Yeah. Which I heard Katoa's in front yeah. of the partner Aiken. All right. And I heard Karen's going to play 13. Katoa running off SJ could be a sneaky pod. Yeah, that's it. There just seems to be a bit of uncertainty there with the, with who is actually locking down those spots, Fucking and I'm worried about that. Every year over there. Every year over there. Exactly that, and that's my concern there with going <laughs> the forwards over there. Um, Lindsay Collins. Like him. Not for me. No, why not? Coming back from a big injury, but I like him. He pushed Weir Hargraves to the bench, chugs along in about 60. He's good. Yeah. Hammer side. The hammer. I'm on the, I'm on the feeds. He's looking big. He's fast. I'm I'm on Fidzy. I'm on him. Another one that's so you know, unfortunate circumstances because their team. I just don't see the Cowboys competing very good this year. So Can, could you not see him being like a sneaky for like centre wing? Nah, not in our team. No. For for me, Glenn's golden rules are high ceiling clubs generate revenue and high ceiling clubs, especially if you're going for attacking points. Um, yeah, yeah. But what if you're on the side that doesn't attack? Like so, well, most of those dudes, if they've well, especially are you, are you, if they're in there from tell, last year, are you telling me to get Fidzy in the centres for base? Is that what you're trying to say? No, I'm look not. down the camera and say, it. "Tell our people." No, I'm not. I'm yeah, just, there you I'm go. I'm just saying, like sometimes you can't afford all the people from the high ceiling clubs. Like you have to make some sacrifices. Of course you do, more. but I mean, you know, even if you can, try and make the sacrifices in the high ceiling clubs as much as possible. You can, I mean, but uh, if you if you wanted to pod on with Fidzy, I wouldn't say no way. Eh? I mean, that's oh, what's putting me off Hastings as well, is that fact that, I mean, there's already that issue of, well, do you go club loyalty and Dewey when he gets back, or does Hastings have to fight for his spot, or is Hastings maybe going to do garbage and then get pulled when Dewey comes back, and that's plan is my, as well. My prediction is Brooks will go, and Hastings and Dewey will be the halves. Hmm. Right. Um, Rocco Berry. Is he going to lock down the centre spot for the Warriors? He looked good. He looked good um, against Melbourne the other day. Rickster was loving it, but I, I know Rickster loves the Warriors. I think I think he looked really good in defence, more than attack, which unfortunately doesn't translate to super coach points. Yeah. And yeah, I don't like the Warriors. What's his chances What's his year? price? Uh, doesn't matter if you haven't got it. Um, um, yeah, I think the Warriors. Won't be in the eight this year, so. Whether what just scrape by, or they're just not not even in contention. Oh. three twenty two for Rocco. Yeah. You can see him around the ninth to twelfth ish kind of range. Yeah. Right, so on Cobo. Yeah, I like Cobo, especially like... if he gets full back spot, even a wing spot. Yeah. I'll probably jump on. I'll jump on even if he's on the wing. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So that. That's the big question going around Brisbane is who's going to lock down these spots. Where's Tessie New going to play? Because I've seen Tessie New popping up in a lot of lists as well. Well, he's injured. He's done a hamstring, I think. He's at least four to six weeks away. Yeah. Oh. So he's, he's missing for the opening two rounds. So they'll give Cobo time to cement that fullback spot. They've got, the, they've got the trials this week. I think David Mead was named at fullback, maybe. Well, Cobo still on the wing. I heard talks too that. Parramatta trying to loan Jermaine Asako. 
So that could put a stop to that Sean Russell thing too, if that goes through. I have heard some things about Osaka at Parramatta, and then when I checked the app today, he's still listed as being with Brisbane. Yeah, so yeah. So I wasn't sure what was going on there. Approaching the situation mm. after the trial on the weekend. So. Well, he's a dolphin. Exactly. Yeah, in so. 2023. Brisbane really... Yeah, might, as well, might as well cut your losses and get something yeah, back on your salary cap for it. Well, that's it, and start thinking and preparing for the future anyway, the inevitable. All right, okay. Ooh, that's juicy. I mean, is that juicy, or is a Sarko a trap even if he goes to Parramatta? I feel like he's a trap no matter what. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be touching a Sarko, but it just ruined people's cheapy because he'll probably get one wing spot, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm, all right, cool. Uh, moving on, we've got a couple left. Liam Martin in second row. Panthers, 400 and something. I don't like, like it. Why not? Because I went back and had a few, look through a few of his games last year. Even in 80 minutes, he was punching out 40s and 42s and things. So if you're playing 80 minutes in the back row, I want at least 60. And then plus your attacking stats on top. All right. All right. Fair enough. Lolo. I want to see something first. If Something's he gets changed. put in the front row. Big five minutes, 60 minutes in the front row, I'll have him. I, I don't think his jersey number matters. He's going to play the same minutes in the same role, 8, 10, 13. It's not going to change him. And yeah, I just don't think any party's happy there in that situation. I don't think he's happy being there. I don't think, I think they want to fork out his million dollars a year anymore. Yeah, fair enough. That's not his fault. No, no, absolutely not. No, but I think fresh start on both parts would rejuvenate. But who's way. picking up the rest? I was of about to say, yeah, right. because yeah, you want a fresh start, you better pay out his old contract because Daddy still wants his money. That's what I mean. It's a tough situation. Mm. Uh, and finally, on our list of good mids, uh, Jai Arrow, under five hundred k. If he locks down eighty minute edge. Yeah, if you can get 80 minutes on the edge, I'll probably jump on Joy. He's got to play the full 80 on the edge? He's got to play the full 80 for me, yeah. He's not He's not the workhorse he, he was at the Titans. If you remember him at the Titans, he used to come on and he, he'd tackle his ass off. But I don't know, now he just got a bit older. He's probably realised there's you don't have to chase the ball. There's a line there. <laughs> Someone else will tackle that dude. So I don't know. I don't know. His work rate dropped off for me. But I'll still look at him if he gets 80 minutes. Well, he's playing in a much better team now, so he doesn't have to chase everything, you think. I have to do it all myself. And I, think, gonna do it. I think that's the same issue with Liam Martin, right, is the fact that he was in a decent team last year and they weren't doing too bad most of the time. They were doing a lot of defence because that's what their game was based around and then it was just like, oh, Nathan, line break off back of force dropouts or, you know, out to the wing. Line break off the back of force dropouts. Like, they've got a style. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Alrighty, cool. Um, next question for me then is, what's your plan for Turbo? It seems to me it's the biggest question of the season. When are you going to get him in? How long do you wait? I floated the idea earlier of waiting until Origin uh, or after Origin 1. And Bergs, what did you say? No, you're mad. Yeah, you're yeah. crazy, 100%. Yeah. I did. But he's you're- seen merit. Well, I, I think it's going to be dictated by him. So, if, if all right. If he goes low, I think they got Melbourne and Penrith in week two and three. If he can go sub 80 or whatever there against those two, hopefully, by the time round six, seven comes, he'll be ripe for the picking, or as ripe as he's going to get anyway. Because it's not like you're going to get him at 650k at any part of the season or anything like that. Outrageous. No, but that's it. So, what is the lowest you can expect? What's the for me? What's the minimum budget that you need for Turbo? Oh, I think uh, as low as you'll get will be yeah, about 859. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon yeah, 859. So, a mill with interest, really. Yeah, it's a big ask, uh, but for me, at, at, in my draft side at the moment, I have him. I have him. You do. I do. I yeah. have him in my draft, like my, my side Your classic side. together. Yeah, my classic side. Yeah, I saw that the other day. You get down to the bottom of Berg's team and then tucked on the on the bench. Look who it is. Little Travojevic <laughs> playing fullback for the Manly Sea Eagles. Well, who is this? I nearly dropped a brick. All right? Yeah. I could not believe it. And the audacity to put him on the bench over Teddy. 
Yeah. Well, Captain Teddy, because I thought everyone would look at Teddy. No one's going to look at that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think, oh, fucking, he's done real shit with his money. No. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I was I was starting to think that as we got a little bit down parts and parts of your team, and I was just like, oh, wait a minute. All righty. Um, so, yeah, so you're starting with Turbo. Oh, he's in my side. My side is very shit with... This is this is a side just quickly. I've got Cook, Pangai, Jacob Saifidi, because I heard he's starting over Clemmer, <clears throat> David Fafida, Oka, dude from Melbourne, um, Okolatu. I can't say. From Manly so, or Manly, Melbourne? Manly. Ola Kowatu. Ola Kowatu, that's it. Oh, the Manly Storm. Yeah, I know yeah, him. I said Manly. No, you didn't. No, I did not. Oh, then i got Lukey, um, Mitch Moses, Sean Johnson. Which Yuck. I'll, I'll change Sean Johnson for Hastings. I, I did that, but it didn't save, obviously. Uh, then I got Aikens, which I obviously swapped Aikens and Stags around as well at this point. Billy Smith, Suwali. Now, Moga. Moga. I'm, I'm tossing up between Moga and um, bloody Suli. One of them will get a centre spot there, I think. Um, just a matter of which one. And then Surely, I'll, Suli gets in. Then I've got James Tedesco, and then really only one person on my bench we want to talk about, which is Trevojevic. No, nah, let's go through the rest of your bench. Let's figure out how you managed to afford uh, this. Hobbelati, Cartwright, Amon, Ezra Mam, Blake Taff, uh, that Mimosa from... He's meant to get a... He's from meant Newcastle. to get a start, yeah. Tepo Amaroa, Scott Sorensen, Sione, Sione Fainu, and Young Maney. And Kobe Heverington is my bench. All right, Colin. First yuck. thoughts? Yuck? Yeah. Just straight yuck. All right. It oh, but terrible. If you're going to sacrifice like that if you want to get Turbo. And did you say Dave Fafita as well? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. I don't know how you thought it. <laughs> you told me that. that. I, <laughs> greedy, but... I was like 20%, really. Wow, 20%. And yeah. Teddy. I had to drop Yeah, well, that's it. Three players in here at what? Three million dollars almost. Yeah, like it's, it's a big, it's, and the rest is just shit. All right. Like no offense to those guys. <laughs> Sorry guys. So I'm going to start from the forwards and move my way down. Um, Tom Starling, starting hooker. Chris Randall on the bench. Uh, so AF- if Tom Starling's right to go and start the season at number nine, and Hodgson's wearing thirteen. Right, which that, I think Elliot might get, unfortunately, or if, even if Hodgson's bench utility that comes on as that Raven middle forward, I like Starling. Right, I like. Oh, but I think, a lot has to go his way. I think he's about earned his spot there, but yeah, it's just a question of the loyalty aspect of Ricky and what what happens with Hodgson. Um, so yeah, I'm taking a gamble. I'm hoping to see Tom Starling get a few more minutes, especially in the trials of starting hooker, and see Hodgson be used in a different role within the team. Um, for the front row, I got AFB and Lindsay Collins. Um, and then on the bench, I got Spencer Lanew and George Burgess. What's Lindsay Collins worth? 460. Yeah, and Stefan, big Stefano around that price. Possibly. I'd be easily be making that swap. All right. That's you. I'll consider yeah, it. I'm, I'm just saying. I'll consider it. I uh, probably won't. Uh, second row forwards, I got uh, TPJ, Olakowatu, Jai Arrow. Uh, and then on the bench, I've got Tepo Moroa, Kobe Hetherington, and Jack Kaszewski. What's what? Jack Kaszewski worth? Uh, yeah, it'd be free. 250. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the average part of a bad bunch. All right. I don't know. I, I need a place older there. I'm really hoping. But yeah, it's... he's just a place taken. I'm hoping some cheapies come through, yeah. to be honest. Um, in the halfback, I've got Jerome Hughes and then Chanel Harris Tavita. My concern with him is I don't know what, what role he's going to take up in that Warrior side. I think he's earned himself a spot, but is he going to end up playing centre or wing or something? I wouldn't touch him unless he's probably starting hooker playing big minutes. Well, see, I'm hoping now for starting hooker. I know you, I called you crazy. I did. <laughs> But the more I think about it, the more it's like, It's well, not going to happen, I don't yeah. think. It won't happen. Yeah, it's I so think, wishful. I can see him probably as the 14 until Nick Arima has a fuck up and then switch him over. Yeah. Or SJ breaks down. 
Right, well, then that puts me in a bit of a pickle. Um, in the 5'8", I've got Luke Keary and Billy Walters, if he's going to lock down that spot over Mam. Uh, otherwise, I'll probably swap to Mam. Well, that's it. And if uh, CHT, Chanel doesn't start, you just go to the start and half back for the Rabbitohs and use that money elsewhere to upgrade. Yeah. Well, I'm also I'm concerned with the Rabbitohs, whether that, that they're going to test out a few combinations as they go throughout the season, dependent on results. Uh, so that's a watching act for me. I'm, I'm a little bit sketchy there. I mean, I know Brisbane's capable of doing the same thing, but, I mean, they did it for 12 months last year, so he's hoping they've got their shit together. Uh, in the centres, you and Aiken, uh, Katoni Stagg, Xavier Coates, and I've got Will Pinasini. Uh On the bench, Kieran, Targo, and Sawali. That's almost identical to mine. Yeah. I think I don't have Keegan. I've got someone else. Well, it's him or Momo. It's whoever locks down that spot, but I'm not actually sure I can afford Momo. I think Momo's about 100k more. Uh, and then fullback, I've got Teddy Puppy. Now, I know Puppy's obviously, there's concerns around him not starting round one. Trell apparently now back round two. Yeah, that brings Trell straight into my team. Yeah, yeah well, that's Smith it. dropped me that. Um, I think I definitely start taking a look at Trell. I'm real sweet on him if he's goal kicking over at South. Absolutely. All right, who's your draft team? You got one off the top of your head or over you? Um, well, yeah, the the centers are pretty much identical to you. At yeah. the moment, I have KP and Teddy at fullback, but that's going to change to the trail. And then I have uh, Jackson Hastings and Ezra Mam yeah. in the 5 8 spot. Um, and I've got Nathan Hillius from South in the halfback spot. Um, And then. Hooker. Hooker is, I think, Randall and Starling at the moment. Oh. Um, front row is Utsawa Kamanu. And he's criticised that for a minute. I've lost it. Okay, yeah. So that's where he's at. Who are your fullbacks again? Uh, Teddy Trell. Trell. See, Trell's only missing a week now. Yeah, well, see, I, I think I'm with him and I'm going straight to Trail. It's a, it's a gamble of whether you start the season with Trail or Puppy. Um, the thing is, if you're going to start with a couple of these dudes in the key positions like Harry Grant, you're waiting a week anyway. He's a week away. Brennan Smith's a week away. Munster. Munster's a week away. Yeah. Um, some of the key dudes for those particular positions are, are a week away. Nate um, could be a week away, could start. Who knows? Like, that's... I think he's leaning more towards starting the season now, to be honest with you. Yeah, so it's one of them things. Do you hold off? Do you hold off and maybe what? Because you still get the two free looks. So you could be able to get a price rise somewhere. Like, granted, it's probably not going to be worth a trade sort of price rise, though, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. So do, do you hold off on one of them and maybe push to pick him up round five? Or will they just chug along and score? and? Keep their points and go up. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you reckon? Uh, I don't know. What do you reckon? What's the question? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Good work, boys. <laughs> Leave the show in your capable hands for 30 seconds. <laughs> I don't know where he Ask went with people that. people at home what it was. <laughs> what was the question to people at home? Um, yeah, but we front raised Tino and Uto Akamanu. Oh, Tino. Yeah, just because of the dual capabilities. We have Brandon Smith, Pengai, Olukawatu, Jai Arrow, Bully Moore, and Piakura in the back row. Where's Piakura? Brisbane. I think he's spent it for a week or two to start the season. Then I'm hoping he can push that start and edge spot. Over? Ricky, probably. Or a Barty. Yeah, okay. A few in the mix. All right, fair enough. Cool. So that is our draft teams. Yeah. Hmm. How much do you reckon they're going to change before TLT? I reckon heaps. Probably oh, about 63% of it. 63% of it? Oh, fucking whole thing. Except for maybe Turbo or Teddy. All right. Fair enough. Hopefully. Well, uh, Brad Smith has been doing some stuff for us over at supercoach360.com. If you haven't checked out supercoach360.com, uh, there's heaps of articles and write-ups on Supercoach and different tips and tricks and strategies and from a bunch of the people who we talked to on last week's show. Um, 
but he's been doing some more stuff on PPM. He watched the trials over the weekend and he crunched some of the numbers with some of the awesome dudes from Supercoach Live Chat who... Uh, Supercoach Live Chat? Yeah, why not? What's that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Supercoach Live Chat. Um, that do... Uh, the live Supercoach scoring, I believe they crunched uh, some potential Supercoach numbers over the weekend and Brad's done a little thing for us today. So we're going to go to that. Good evening, Juzzy. Good evening, lads. Hope everyone's well and you've all had a fun time watching some great footy over the weekend. It was pretty uh, pretty good to see a lot of football back. Um, just here tonight, just have a quick chat about some of the stars that shone out during the seven games uh, that I managed to get to watch. I, I, there's one yet to go, I think, and um, I didn't get to see all of that one. But anyway, if you, anybody's interested, uh, I have put an article up on supercoach360.com. If, anybody, if you haven't been to the site, supercoach360.com, it is the place for all your information. There it is right there. Lots of great articles from Timo, Glenn. Bergs has got a stack of great articles in there just for some light reading. So go to supercoach360.com and get into it. It's all great fun. Uh, the first player we want to have a look at tonight is this bloke, Matt Lodge. I've never really liked him much myself, um, but but his figures over the weekend uh, can't really be that ignored. Uh, he didn't play a full game, only played 40 minutes. Um, managed to get a super coach score of around about 65. Uh, that's when you take into account... Um, you know, he's uh, actually, uh, yeah, 65, about 100 run metres, three tackle bus, and one line break to boot. So he, he did pretty well for himself. He, he did uh, put up an outstanding score. I mean, that's for 40 minutes too. So if you take that over a, um, you know, 60-minute game, he's going to get very close to 100, about a PPM of 1.2. You know, certainly a player that we can't, um, that you should put on your watch list or even maybe even consider if you're looking for a super pod for round one. The next player we want to have a look at is this kid, Tyrrell Sloan. Now, for some reason, uh, Coach Griffin decided to start him on the wing and start Ramsey at fullback. Well, I think anybody that saw the game, everyone will agree that that's just not going to happen come uh, round one. What well, shouldn't happen, <laughs> um, that uh, Sloan will be the fullback. Every time, when he did move to fullback, every time he touched the ball, he looked electric. He was active, he was really involved, and um, if ever a player is going to pass the eye test in Supercoach, it was this kid, you know, he, he did look good. It's just a pity he plays for the, uh, for the Dragons, of course, but um, at another team, he'd certainly be a lock nearly first round. Uh, probably one point to make is that when you're looking at him versus Katoni Staggs, I'd be very tempted, if you're going Katoni Staggs, maybe give this kid some thought over Katoni Staggs because between the two of them, um, the figures look a lot healthier for uh, for young Tyrrell and I think he he, um, he he really did shine and I think we'll see some, a lot more out of him um, as the season goes on. Um, the, probably the last player we will, um, I want to mention, uh, and this comes as no surprise to anyone, is the Tom Terrific Turbo. Tommy, he went, uh, uh, he went gangbusters for 40 minutes. He, he had something like, um, if I just read off my sheet here, he had, uh, one line break, two tackle busts, two try assists, um, uh, for an estimated Supercoach score of, I think, 65. Of course, those 65, that'll, you know, it gives him, if he played 80 minutes, around about 130. Tom normally goes better in the back end of the second half anyway. Um, so he's going to go very close to his, uh, his sort of average of around 140, 150 points if you go by that. So the big question uh, for all Supercoaches and the big question for you boys there on the panel um, given the fact that Tommy could very easily looks like he's going to 
hit 140, what do you do? Are you going to start with Tommy or are you not? Um, particularly if, if he's going to keep up that sort of form. Um, and he does look good. Um, it's a quandary I'm wondering about myself, wondering, you know, uh, you know, Paps, if Paps doesn't start, do I somehow find a way to get rid of Pappenhausen and put t Tommy in, etc.? Um, but his figures from the weekend, I mean, I think he was scoring himself at about 1.2 ppm. And it, like I said, if he does that in a normal NRL game, he, yeah, uh, he's not going to drop many, um, much coin. And he'd be one that you really want to get in your team. Anyway, that's about it from me. As I said, uh, make your way over, all listeners, to supercoach360.com. Great website and it's free. Tell your mates all about it. Jump on board. And until next week, until next time, thanks very much, boys, and have a great evening. All right, thank you very much to Brad Smith there for putting that together. What a legend. You're the man, Brad. Thank you very much, you, buddy. Brad. So, boys, he asked you a question. Um, Bergs, I mean, you've pretty much already answered this, I mean, especially with your draft at the moment, but we've we've seen what you've had to do to achieve that, which is you've really got to make some heavy sacrifices, but with a PPM of, I think, I think might have been closer to 1.5 if he pumped out 60 and 40 minutes the other day, um, but still, that's mighty impressive. Oh, the bloke's a freak, man. He really is. He's the key. He's the key to the, all their attack, virtually. Like, um, can can attack from anywhere on the park too. Like, proved it last year. He's got a long. He's got long range tries in him still. Um, oh, look. If anything, he's gotten better. He's gotten faster, and he's ready to run all game now. In a perfect world, at this point, I'd love to. At this point, I might get rid of Teddy and keep Turbo. Who do you put in as a cheapie? Because I got laughed out of the park for commenting on a Whisperer post about Xavier Savage the other day. Just like, mate, if you're going to shoot him down, why put him up as an option for someone to get? Yeah, I don't know what that guy's doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I beat him last year in the Hemi's Cup. We all know what happens when I beat you. That's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Akon. Um, you'd remember such times as last season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's right, right Troy. Rough. But, yeah, look, at the end of the day, oh, whoever's cheap enough to run in there and um, get at least some po decent points to turn over. Or, oh, look, I've, you've seen the team. I could probably do better with a bit of time spent on it, like, let's be real. But well, it's it's a big ask to try if, to slot them two in there. If they're average, if you take their averages from last year, your second fullback really only needs to score 30 points. And if Tommy hits his 140 average, which I don't think will happen, but if he hits his average from last season, well, then you're already in front of Ted's, Teddy and Pups or whatever. Yeah, but if they're, if they're combined average climb, then Turbo's got to keep up Well, that's up it, with it, and Turbo drops, so yeah, exactly. it's risky. Yeah. So if you are going to do that then, if you are going to run that risk, if that's a way that you're going to be able to squeeze him into your side without having to make too many compromises, who's the option? Who do you actually put in at I'd, fullback? I'd have a look at that Sloan. He's still four 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 sixty or something, isn't he? Still fucking four hundred thousand, three hundred thousand cheaper than the other two. It's true. Um, it's still a massive, massive. It does a massive gamble, like you said. They don't have points in them. And then um, what else you have to do is later on in the season you have to find what half a million dollars possibly to upgrade to a teddy or a pups for your run home. That's a lot of money to find. Well, with the boost, that's easy in our but it is. But still, it's yeah, it's possible, especially when you get to nothing season, but. Right, you, that's it. It's a question of where do you find that cash. At some point throughout the season, you're going to have to find, yeah, at least five, six hundred k ultimately and to do those and upgrades. And then if you don't start with Nath, you have to find money for him. Yeah. If you well, don't start with Dave for feeder, you have to find money for him. Like, just due to the lack of cheapies that I know about at this point, mm. I ended up having to drop Nath to be able to cover for getting people like, you know, Billy Walters and just spreading that money that little bit more to be able to get those 250k players instead of the 180k, 185s. Oh, man, it is rough this season. Some of these players are so expensive, and actually trying to put the jigsaw together of your side is just, oh, it's a menace. Still in my head, and I've only tried to do it once or twice. No, yeah, you steer clear. Yeah. Still TLT. All righty. Uh, so I think that is about it for 
what we had to talk about. We've just got a few questions. So, Bergs, have you got the questions on the Facebook there? No. All right, hold on. I think I might have them. Oh, I have ones on Twitter. All right, sweet as. It's only the one. Oh, what's going on? Um, from Toddy G. No Pappy, Cleary, Munster or Grant for round one. Surely it's starting to make Tommy slash Teddy combo even more appealing. Also thoughts on Mo. Good evening, Juzzy. Good evening, Lane. Potentially missing a week or more. Good evening, Juzzy. Good evening. Let's hope not for his sake. Well, that's exactly what you're running. Moses at halfback. Teddy Pup. Uh, Teddy Turbo. Yeah, but I, I'm not sold on Mitch Moses. You know, he's he's got the low no, floor. I wouldn't be sold on Mitch Moses either. Um, but, yeah, I, I didn't mind Toby Sexton the other day. Yeah? You yeah. turn the corner, eh? Oh, look, I don't know if I'm on him. I'll probably watch again this week. Um, but... A couple of, like, older football heads sort of rate him, you know, and if normally they're not too far off the money. Well, so, are they the same ones that said Luke Brooks is the next Andrew Johns? I hope not. I don't, because you know I don't remember much. <laughs> <laughs> um, Juzzy, what do you got over there? Oh, wait, did we answer that? Um, oh, I've got Moses at halfback. Not sold on Moses, but in saying that, does have potential there to get... Get a bit of a roll on, especially early, as they tend to do, the Eels. Um, I do have him there because of their draw. Their draw is pretty kind, the first opening rounds. He is. He is. Um, so, yeah, I, I really I, I really have looked at Mitch Moses. It is a toss-up if I can keep him, but... Um, but, yeah, I'd love to start with Tommy. Love to. Love to. Love to start with the Teddy... Tommy combo, but in a real world, fuck it hurts. Just, it, it hurts the rest of his side so bad. I said I just couldn't spread the rest of the wealth far enough to start with Tommy. I can see him having to drop at least thirty off his average in the first ten rounds, like or over the first ten rounds. Who Tommy? Yeah, I've, he's got to. He's one hundred and ten. I can see him being able to maintain, but unless there's heaps more points on offer again this year. I mean, I just can't see him being able to maintain 145 average. That was insane last year. He had to get his team to the finals. I mean, this year it's supposed to be about the team, no doubt. I don't know, but he's a freak. So let's see what happens in the best way. He's a, he's an absolute beast. Um, Brad Smith says, uh, has Saxy been to a dress fitting yet? Bergs, your bride to be? I don't know, Melbourne back in lockdown yet. You know, we know Danny Andrews just pulls no, him out of his ass. No, they, they took the mask off today, mate. They're back to normal. So lockdown next week. <laughs> Saxy probably won't get to his refitting. <laughs> All right, Brian Ings. It says, with the increased potential for late COVID outs this year, should we put greater value on jewels and teams who play a lot of early games, um, i.e. South Broncos, Panthers, so you can sub or trade players? Yeah, well, that's the strategy I, I'm... I think you said the other week is to make sure they're playing and put them in your side early, if you know what I mean. So you've got the bench there to fuck around with later. So if you if they're definitely playing on the Friday, they're best being in your side, yeah. you know. So, yeah. I, I Just get the points on the board in case the weekend goes upside down. Well, no, not the points on the board, so to speak, but if they're going to be your reserve anyway, mm. like no doubt about it, they're going to be reserve then put him on the park because if COVID or something does strike and then he's already played, you can't move it around. There's nothing you can do. Um, so if, so if you end up with two of your starters or three of your starters ruled out from COVID early and you've still got three bench players sitting there unplayed, you're killing yourself. Yeah, and especially if you've reserved one that's played Friday night when you could have just had him on the park. Because yeah. he's going to be playing in your side anyway. Unless it's your captain, you wouldn't leave your captain on the bench, clearly. But if if you've got players in your reserves, they might be your shooter players, but just for the save the headache of you having him played and then he's on your bench, there's nothing you can do. You can't pull his score. You can't pull his score off the bench and swap yeah. him with say, uh, say Angus Crichton got ca- got got COVID. Yeah, but just, yeah, like you know, you said, starting all the early players on the field, and as the weekend progresses, you have them on your bench. Yeah. That's probably your best COVID plan. Yeah, well, I mean, and, that's, yeah. and then say also save your trades, obviously, throughout the rolling lockout, to 
get them in just before their game so you know they're locked in to play and you're not going to get a late COVID three hours before the game and you've used your trades before. Well, I think you're allowed to reverse up until Yeah, you out. can now yeah, as long as... Well, it depends how, how if they played the Thursday game. If the dude you've traded has played That's the it. Thursday game, you, you're locked out of reversing that trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it, there, is, there is a bit of gamble in it. Um, but that has that is going to help the cause heaps. Like, how yeah, you can do that now. Reverse the reverse the trade. Like like remember I, I remember last year everyone brought in Tohu and then he just got struck down. And it was like fuck, people like I think Dan and a couple of other people brought him in that week and he didn't even play and there was no news until an hour before. Kickoff. All people didn't trade out Maddo. You could have reverse trade yeah. traded out Maddo and There's yeah, heaps of things that could have went a lot better with that tactic. Alrighty. Um Jared Watson, uh, who do we think partners Daniel Saifidi in the front row? Is it Clemmer or Jacob? So, you know, I've seen a report about Jacob. I, I'd like Jacob. I'd, I'd like Clemmer, just so he can keep that Saifidi momentum going. Once Daniel's off, Jacob comes on and just keeps carrying on. Yeah. Well, he's still his game to the next level, Jacob. I rate him. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, he's in your, your side. Yeah, yeah, he's... So uh, what do you do if he doesn't get the starting spot and he's coming off the bench? You still have him as your starting front row? Uh, look, in the past, like, I know it's a massive gamble, but if he's if they're sharing those minutes equally, I can see him doing just as good a job as the other two. And if he's coming on when other people are tired, I think he might have that odd better attacking stat rather than the first 10, 15 minutes of the game when everyone's still a bit fresh and defensively sound. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Right. I like he's got appeal to me. He's just got appeal. He's not just to come on and do a job for fifteen minute man like he was two, three years back. He's mm. coming on and he's taking his game. It's his game. And he comes on and he does a wonderful job. Yeah, as he's probably up there with Clement now. Or if not surpassed Clement now. Not yeah. far behind his brother. Alrighty. Um Luke Smith says, How are you guys planning for COVID? Uh he are you planning for enough or two? Uh, seeing the late withdrawals in the Raiders trial scared me a little, so maybe squad depth might be more important than early points. So pretty much you're going to go with enough, so early points and options for covering for COVID. I mean, how do you cover for COVID? Because you just sort of hope it doesn't strike down your guns or, you know, your cheapies or anything. At least if it strikes down a cheapie, there's a chance... It's going to affect everyone, but yeah, I mean, your mids and your pods and stuff like that, but you've got no control over it. It's a crazy variable. All you can do is try and stay on top of the news, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult year. The winner of this year should get fucking 100 grand. What, did they get the Holy Grail? Yeah, Have you seen? Got... Have you seen what you get? <clears throat> no. You get a little trophy. You get a little oh, yeah. Holy Grail trophy, a little super coach Holy Grail. Fucking Tim Moody spewing, you get one. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shout out, Timmy. How you doing, buddy? Timmy. Uh, Barry McCormick Uh, Well he says part 2 of his question But I haven't seen part 1 Do we answer Lukey's probably I think we kind of answered the COVID situation A bit earlier but yeah I I think He's got a good point there We go on squad depth Well I'm going well I went for 25 I didn't go a single enough And it was hard to do Well that's it I mean ultimately I was going to save Maybe 150 grand by going a couple of nuffs. If a couple of bargain basement cheapies come along and I can flip placeholders to cheapies, I'll do that. I'll try and spend that 100 grand and do an upgrade on someone. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much <clears throat> where I'm at, Penn and TLT. Because yeah, no, nah, I can't afford, I don't think I can afford nuffs. No, well, you can't because if you don't have the, if you've got three nuffs or something to start the season with on the bench, it's going to cost you trades early. If COVID does strike your team. Yeah, that's it, to move them out and get people in that are mm. playing at the last minute. I mean, it'll be a straight swap, dollar for dollar. Yeah, but, but yeah, that it's costing you a trade to replace maybe a 20-point loss if you have someone actually playing on the bench. Yeah, whereas if I have one of my 250 to 350 players go down, I make back 130, 140, 150 grand, just bank 160 even. Maybe more, I'm bad at math. But the point is, I get that straight in my bank to then be able to use an upgrade, especially if I use a boost that week to just get the move done. I'm excited for this season because of that. 
like that's going to help out people like me that aren't the best forward planners. I'm going to be able to react to situations as they pop up. And I think it's going to be important. I put a post up the other day and someone commented on it. 42 trades, you don't need to worry about saving them. You go, you don't got to worry about anything. It's like, oh, I reckon you're going to, COVID's going to affect more teams than you expect throughout this year. Yeah, I don't know why they just didn't agree to a bubble again. No, I don't think they are. Nah, I'm pretty sure they're not. They've got uh, sort of protocols where only a few of them are allowed out in public places together, but even then, you know what they're like. They'll find ways around that sort of stuff. Not bring the party with them. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. They're not going to be locked up. They've been locked up for two years like the rest of us. They're over it, so what do you do? Um, Bowsy. On a born. He's getting paid 600 grand a year. Uh, he says, hey, champions, thoughts on Alex Johnson as a gun centre. Uh, I like the look of Jake Clifford as a backup 5 eighth or half. Change my mind. <laughs> Keep up the good work, you good motherfuckers. Yeah, boy. Um, not a fan of Jake Clifford. Well, I mean, Gon's the Knights fan and laughed at it, so that worries me. I wasn't laughing at it. I was laughing at it. That he, I thought he said he was looking at Jay Clifford, but changed his mind. No, we've got to change his mind. Yeah. Oh. He's asking us to change his mind because he's seriously looking at Jay Clifford. I think Clune's a better option than Clifford. And he, yeah. I wouldn't recommend you Clune either. <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend either of them, to be fair. Are Declan Casey going to pick up a spot at the uh, Bulldogs? Want to flatten well, KP sure, last surely Ockenball's not getting a spot. No, he's useless. Man. He could. He doesn't just refuses to stay on his wing. Just rushes in and does nothing. No, Casey kid, well, hard in defence, decent read too, obviously. Yeah, well, that's it. I, I think that automatically puts him in front of Ockenball for me. Yeah, I just love watching KP get flattened. It was brilliant. Hey, let's. Did you shit a brick? KP bashing. Did you shit a brick for a second? When he went down, you were just like, oh, this would be a rough injury for the trials. Nah, yeah, he's tough. And then KP. he got back up and you were like, yeah, good. You'll be right. He's tough. He's tackle, bros. Yeah. Oh, that was him all week. It was a, a, lot, a lot of the times, one, those spectacular ones don't hurt yeah. as much as the unspectacular ones. Yeah, because they're not expecting it. It's that bone jar, the one that bone jars you. You just stops you dead. <laughs> you uh, run 100 mile an hour, you stop dead. Virtually slide down a dude. Yeah, it's fucked. It is when you say it like that, yeah. Um, Chris McCullen says, guns or depth? I'm trying for depth. Oh, he's got his team there. We'll go through that later. Ado says, uh, who do you lads like out of Curran, Maddo, or TPJ? TPJ. Because of the jaw. Yeah, well, that's why I've gone him. It's why I put him in my team. And High price point, though. But, I mean, compared to the other two, it's around the same, isn't it? Yeah, the same-ish. They all have injury suspension concerns. Yeah, definitely. And so, we did see a little bit of a uh, little bit of angry in TPG the other day. A little bit of aggro. Probably Maddo's the only one guaranteed eighty out of the three. Yeah. Don't know what's happening with Curran. Yeah, rumour is that he's going to play thirteen, and his average is down when he's playing thirteen. So. Yeah, well, he got quite a few attacking stats playing on the edge last year, which really inflated his score. Yeah, but yeah, people are saying if he gets 13, he's probably a wait till Tohu comes back and they put him back out on an edge. But then who's that affect? Does that affect Aiken or does that affect Katoa? Because there's a lot of boys wanting minutes there. Yeah, there's a lot of water to pass under the bridge by then. You can judge that on form. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but I mean, it does come into your um, decision-making process especially when it comes to costing you a trade later in the season or having him maybe not made as much money and then getting stuck in there because I've got one of those every year. Every good year. Um, Leash Tetley, who to replace Dunster? Uh, it'll be old, mate. But I think Dunster was like 200, two, like he was semi dear, wasn't he? Like two, over 250. No, he wouldn't have been. Um, if you haven't got a Suwali, I'd be looking at a Suwali. Targo. Targo. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple. Uh, Penasini. If you've, yeah, Penasini played some decent footy. Amone, if you like Yeah, that. he's a gamble, though, Amone. Oh, yeah, big was, time. He's a big gamble. Uh, Bradley Baxter says, Walker, Hines, or Sexton as halfback uh, if I can't afford Cleary to start the season? Oh, man, none of them, ideally, personally. I think they're all a gamble. 
Um, I'm not even sold Sammy Walker gets a start. Big adjustments for Nico, but I think he's up for the challenge, to be honest. I was talking to a guy the other day, and a guy reckons he's right on Sammy Walker. He reckons he's going to be a breakout this year. If anything, he's going to be enhanced by Kiri coming back and the Roosters being at full strength. But does he get the start? Like, what, is he assured the start? What do you like, reckon, Con? Does he get the start? No, I've probably got Drew Hutchinson in front of him. you got Hutcho in front of him as well. What, because he punctured a lung for the club? No, because he big body in defence. That's true. Sammy's got that attack and flair, though. Yeah, that Kiri can produce that. Teddy can produce that. If Joey Man, if you can get another that. back row, pretty much body type in your defensive line on your try line as a half, I think that helps a lot. All right, fair enough. So, who, who's your call then? And another thing, like we said in an earlier podcast, if he hasn't added more strings to his bow, he gets he's predictable. Hines or Sexton then? Oh, oh. If those are the options for the price point they're working with. Yeah, Nico, exactly. Nico, See, exactly. Nico is $200,000 more than Toby Sexton. Yeah, and Nico's in a new club coming off fullback scores. I don't know if I trust that. Mind you, he might be a value pot if he starts finding some form later in the year, but I've also heard whispers that he's going to partner with Moylan. So, yeah, I'd probably go Moses over Bay for them. Yeah. Or even A-Ray over Bay for them. I don't like any of them. But... No, that's it. I wouldn't want to end up with any of those guys unless I was playing a draft, and even then... Wants a strong word. Yeah, it's only a three, three-person choice, I think, at halfback. Cleary, Chez, Jerome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And yet... Cleary could be a smoky. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. I mean, so could Cody, especially if he has to step up and take the attack. Or oh, the yeah, attack can only get Cody but... at six. Yeah. So that's... Oh, right. Cleary's a jewel, so yeah, that's Keary another valuable thing about him. And SJ, you guys just steer clear completely of SJ. Oh. I want to see how it goes. <laughs> I love SJ. I love SJ, but yeah, he's a fucking liability. Man. I considered it the other day, man. When I was putting my draft together, I was just like, mate, four fifty for a halfback. Oh, he's happy. He's he's he, he's he's doing good over there. And I was just like, no, nah, I can't trust that. Yeah, no, yeah. He's, yeah, he's very the game day factor. Can't do it. Like the the liability to be pulled out on game day, and then you lose your halfback score, which could be one of the highest scores, you know, which you're up against in your head to heads, especially that week. If you're up against Cleary or something like that, no, nah, I can't afford that. Can't afford. I mean, just with him losing that yard of well, probably three yards of pace now, he's just not so dangerous running the ball. He's all about setting it up and yeah, which doesn't necessarily translate. No, nah, that's it. I like him when he wants to take on the line. Ah, uh, all right, so. Starting with Toto, pros and cons from Jakob Demek. I don't know. Well, you've got a keeper right. straight away in your centre wing. Expensive, though. How expensive is he? But if he's averaging the same as what his price is, I guess, well, then unless you see him regressing severely. 736, man. That's halfback money. That's David Fafita money. Yeah, well, unless you see him regressing, he's priced at that to start the season for a reason. I don't see him regressing, not if Nath comes back around one. Um, for me, he's priced where he's at. He, he, he if anyone, can go up. Well, that's it. You know his um, base isn't going to drop. It just depends on how his score attacking stats fluctuate, if yeah. they go up or down. Because his he's, he's work rate's there, what's he, 25 to 30 hit-ups a game, yeah. over 300 metres for some games. Um, fucking massive work rate on the dude. And he... Ducks tackles, breaks tackles, he's good for that too. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it, for me, if you can free up the cash, you, you're in front if you start off with Brian Toto yeah, me, in the centre wing. I feel like you're sacrificing Cleary, you're sacrificing Defi, you're sacrificing well, possibly even two-gun fullbacks. You'd almost definitely turbo. You know, otherwise it. you're making some major concessions because I'd like to see a team which looks good with, you know, those sort of options as well as Toto. He's just so expensive to start the season. And it's probably the most volatile position for money changing too. Well, especially if, if he Penrith goes on a dry spell for a month. If Penrith decide they want to start trying to attack more down the right and sharpen up their right side because their left side's decent, then, yeah, that's it. Toto could be in trouble. I mean, the beauty of Toto is he does those uh, kick returns. He and he does fifth, pick up those bases. He picks up those hit-ups. So yeah, exactly. 58, I think. He's that guy. Yeah. Like, let's, let's be real. Same reason Mansour was, man, because he does the kick returns. He does it's, that work. He's a worker. He's so far in front of any other one. 
Yeah. Like, so far in front. Like, he, like, I don't know, man. He's, if I could have the money to get him, I'd have him. Yeah, you got the money to get him. It's just no, whether you choose to spend it that way or not. No, I don't. The money's he's, there for you to buy, mate. Well, he's not, though. Because I'd much rather the Tommy so that's or it. the Turbo or the so, But you do have the money available to get him. You're just not willing to spend it. Not in that area, no. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, Barry, Barry McCormick, uh, his question was actually, um, is it viable to start Turbo, Teddy, Cleary and Deefy? I just don't think it is. Oh. How much does that add up to? I think I think I worked well, it out. Surely you got to have a team enough after that. It's nearly 40 percent of your salary cap on four players. You've still got yeah eighty percent of your team to fill. And yeah, we're well, looking at about three and a half million there. You're also looking at four hundred points a week. Yeah, but then if you got to sacrifice fifty sixties for all these players and go to thirties. Maybe forties on a good day. See, they add up it's, pretty quick too. Yeah, it's not especially gonna... when you got to do it all over the park and you miss yeah. out on I've... all those guys that do jag the attacking. I really stats don't think that's possible in those positions. Yeah, look, I can't do it. You won't be competitive for long. To be honest, I can afford one, maybe two if you're talking two halfbacks. Although, if I was yeah to downgrade a halfback, but ah, uh, sorry, a fullback. But nah, I just don't. I really don't think you can. No, I, think, I think you can take two, maybe out of those four. Yeah, I think your team's crazy having. Um, DF and Turbo, Teddy Turbo. I think even having three of them is crazy, but if you can manage to make it work, good on you. That's it. If nah, the cheapies can't. turn up and the middies land in the right spot, it could be justifiable. Yeah, yeah that's it. You might be able to make the puzzle fit, but at the moment I can't see a way to do it without. you got to pick two, in my opinion. Um, what, two out of those four or just? Yeah, two out of those four. And you can have any two out of those four, really, and still make it work. Although Teddy Clear, uh, Turbo Cleary is the hardest one to make work because... You're giving up a lot of cash. Turbo's obviously the hardest individual to get in. Cleary being second, but personally, yeah. What reckon... is it? 2.2 2. 2 million for those two dudes. Uh, yeah, close to it, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of coin, man. That's it. You're starting to get to a quarter of your salary cap. You're not far off it. You're one million. But in the re- in realistic world, that's how it goes. Like, you got you got your fucking ten dudes there on a hundred. I mean, look, they're both marquee whatever. players for their clubs, and they are that for a reason. But it's a lot for your super coach season. Yeah. Well, like, the difference is clubs have years to build and extract value out of their players. We have to do it on an annual basis, starting yeah. from A, B, C, and you know what I mean, getting to the end. So the start of the season is all about getting value and building value. And I think spending a quarter of your salary cap on two players, ten percent of your players, you know, is crazy. Yeah, where we are. Uh, that's about it. Okay, I've got a quick one. Just a quick one. Just, just Now, if anyone else can answer this, um, <clears throat> send me a message so I can send this <laughs> to Mark. Now, Mark Hindle sent me a message asking, what's the key to the long game in making it to the top 1,000? Like, in your opinion, like, I know there's, look, there's, there's so much involved, but can you sort of... Give him some pointers in what way to, to go about getting there. I think buy planning's massive for it. Yep. Saving your trades. Yep. Um, well, he's having a think. What do you, what, you got anything over there, and Big probably Tom? starting with as many as your dream team as possible. Who you want to finish with? Yep. Working around there. What's the long game? Build, that's it. Build money and then just... As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to do the origin thing, do the origin thing for round one um, for the first buy rounds. But then by the time you get in the second buy rounds, every trade should be building to that dream team. And, yeah, starting with as many as possible. Um, I'm looking to try and get about nine in. Although, to be honest, when I did look at and build my team, I actually haven't checked off how many I've got off my dream team in there. So, uh, yeah, I've definitely got to go back and do that. I've probably got three. Yeah. I might be able to quickly go back now. Um, Best advice I can give you is planning, man. Like, you're planning. Like, I know planning comes undone very quick. You do some planning. Um, check out some podcasts. Um, ask around. You've seen, you've seen the dudes that have been up there the last couple of, couple of years, maybe around the traps, maybe ask some questions in the group, what, what other people's opinions are. I wouldn't take everyone's opinion to heart. I'd just 
take what I could from everyone's opinion and go with, with the best information I could at hand. Um, but it's going to come down to you crunching a, a lot of numbers and doing a lot of planning. Um, Brad, Brad Smith, I know, plans up to eight trades in front. You know, and it's that's something I me, myself can't wrap my head around getting that far in front. I can think three, four, but up to eight trades in front is a massive thing. And he he seems to have a plan, and and he's consistently up there. So it's work. It works for him, and that that comes from a lot of hard work and putting in effort on your, in his own time. Like he listens to all the podcasts. He he's got his head wrapped around Super Coach, you know. And that's up to you to then sort of do that in your own time and and, and at your own pace as well, because not everyone's can do it and has the time to do it. But you've got to find your way to get into it and just work what's best for you and then the rest of it's luck bro and if you're unlucky like me <laughs> shit you'll be 30,000 spend the rest of the year trying to chase it up like I do like that's that's the basic start to the last three or four of my seasons except for one where we went on a bit of a tear as a podcast and um yeah other than that good luck man it's all, all right. about the luck how many of my dream team do you reckon I got in my draft side two four eight eight Maybe the rest of your team's terrible. Or your dream dream team's terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, no, 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 because there's there's a few options in there. Oh, that's right. You put like like, fourteen dudes in it. No, no, no. But team me wrong. I am. I've I've got the lower end of my team. He's got all. I don't have all the high end guns. I've got a lot of the lower end ones. But that being said, like we're talking people like Kiri, TPJ, Teddy. Trail or Puppy, whichever one I run with, you know what I mean? Like, so we're not talking garbage, mm. but yeah, eight in total. So th- that's not a bad start. I've got to chase Cleary, I've got to chase Defi, I've got to chase Turbo. So, I mean, that might be a viable position that a lot of super coaches are actually starting their season with this year, is not being able to start with any of those three and having to pick up other people instead. So, I mean, they're for formidable targets to chase down, chase down, you know, three biggest guns in the positions that they're in. Absolutely. Can I do it? Only time will tell. Yeah, it's it's rough. It's a rough. It's a rough year. Rough year. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to take a lot of like thinking this year to start well. I think. Come what on, it's on me, Starling. <laughs> we done. Lock down that number nine. Yeah, I think we are. All right, let me just quickly run through the list of draft again. If anyone missed it earlier, there's draft podcasts. Um, Fig Jam Rowdy does write ups with us on the supercoach360.com website. www. Do you have to use an AU or anything? No, no, no 360.com. Sweet. Supercoach360. Then there is the Three Wise Draftman, the Headbin Podcast, BDE. Still didn't look it up, do your own research. And the Weekly Rubdown has a rub lab on the Discord. So. If you're already on the Discord with Supercoach Hub and all the good people over there, um, I suggest you find the Discord or find Jared Watson in the group. So around, he's he's part of our group. So if you really want, um, I'll sort something out on the podcast page with him. Um, and yeah, also just want to thank all the people that have seeded me and Con into their leagues, like um, the THC and the Pod. Oh, it's not the it's the Podmasters Cup and stuff now. Uh, massive effort from you guys. I sort of like realise how much work goes into what you do. That's a massive effort. So, cheers, guys. Thank you. Alrighty, yeah. So check out supercoach 360com uh, What have I done with the group codes? Uh, join the Podmasters group, a public public league where you get to play against all the pub. Podcasters in one place. Per day, Julian. This is the public league one. Yes, this is the public league one that definitely wasn't created at all because Berg stuffed up on the podcast the week before. Had He's nothing to do that with that. I promise you. Thank the man. One zero four three nine seven for that one. One zero four three nine seven, and of course the Supercoach three hundred and sixty group code seven nine zero eight seven three. Make sure you also check out uh, NRL Supercoach Tragics on Facebook and YouTube. Make sure you look for us. We're breaking down the podcast into little manageable bad sized pieces for you all uh, on YouTube, uh, section by section. So yeah, look for that uh, Supercoach three hundred and sixty on youtube uh you can find us everywhere you find your podcast if you want to win the super coach championship ring we're 
not going to, I mean, look, send us the shout outs, right? I'll get you a ring if you send me a shout out straight up, right? You get me a shout out, I'll send you a ring. I'll figure it out. Um, you 20 cent one out there. Fucking <laughs> shit. Yeah. I, didn't say, I didn't say which one it was. Um, leave us a Facebook review. Best Facebook review uh, goes into the draw uh, to win the ring. When do you want to give it out? I think just anything related to social media, whether it's no, it's too, hard to, it's too hard to track. I need, End of the year. I need something tangible. Good all year. Bring your friends. Best ride up wins. All right, best review throughout the year. Facebook review. So review us on Facebook. Go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash supercoach360. Oh, we can come up with something better. All righty. Um, yeah, big ups to Rowdy Rick Harrington with the Fig Jam podcast. See you Thursday, uh, Rowdy. All the boys in the Supercoach Mitch. live chat, uh, Discord. Hopefully uh, Tom. What was it? Footy. Weekly Rub Down. Weekly Rub Down, Rub Lab, Discord. The Rub Lab. The Rub Lab's Discord. the part that gets me. There's nothing better than Rub Lab. The Rub Lab sounds like a milking <laughs> factory for men. And, I mean, look, it very well may be. You guys do what you got to do. Um, yeah. That's about it from all of us here at Supercoast 360. What an odd note to end on, but that's hey, how people usually feel about meeting me. Milking factory. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what else is a rub lab? Anyway, we'll see you next week. See you, peeps. Peace. It's a Discord.